Hi, it's Jason Heath here from the Contrabass Conversations podcast. I just want to show you a few of the new features in GarageBand 09. Now, I've been doing a podcast for the last two years and change, and for the first 75 episodes, I actually used Audacity to mix and produce the podcast, and for the last 30 episodes or so, I've used GarageBand on the Mac. I've really been a fan of this, and I just want to show you a few of the new features. You know, since iLife09 came out, the, the two apps that have gotten the most press are iPhoto and iMovie, and deservedly so. They're fantastic apps, but if you do a lot of audio like I do, you're going to find that GarageBand 09 really has a lot of great options. Now, the one thing I want to point out before we get going here is if you do want to do more detailed audio editing of like a specific track, you're still going to want to find another program for that. GarageBand really isn't so much a audio editor as it is a mixer and and the, uh, place to put together m multi-track projects. Um, I actually still use Audacity when I need to edit an interview track. You have a lot more options in something like Audacity, which is a free download. I've also used Sony SoundForge and some other programs too, and there's a lot out there for that. But this is the GarageBand is really a place for you to put together the tracks that you've already worked with into a completed product. So. Let's take a look at the new GarageBand 09. And at first glance, it's a lot like previous editions of GarageBand. Um, but we do have some differences here. You know, you can select your tracks just like just like in all the other versions. It's very nice. Uh, one feature that came out, I believe, in GarageBand 08 is ducking tracks. You can see if I click on this arrow here. I get to choose whether this is a primary or secondary track. So with the tracks that have a blue arrow, the, when they are played alongside a track with a yellow arrow, that yellow arrow will, will be the primary track and the blue arrow track will duck down. It'll become a background track which oh, is such a great thing. It saves so much time. I can't tell you how much ducking of tracks I've done in Audacity uh, over the 75 episodes I did in that. So that one feature is just so fantastic to have in GarageBand. Now, a few other things that are pretty interesting. This is from the old version of GarageBand, but it's, it's really gotten a nice visual update. This audio editor, more detailed audio editor. Let me uh, click on our opener track here and we'll, uh, we'll just play this track for you here. You can see that you'll be able to see the track go by in both windows. And as we're listening, I can move this slider, zoom in and out here, but it leaves this window with the same perspective. Or I can do the opposite. I can move this around. Zoom Hi, folks, around and welcome here. to another episode. So that's great to really be able to do some more fine tuning. This is really excellent. Now, some other things you can do in GarageBand that are pretty useful is you can just go down to the bottom of the track here and we can move in and out to select how much of the track we want to use. And if we want to loop a track, now this is this is a dialogue track. This is not really a loop a loop appropriate track, but if I wanted to, I can click here and you can see the circular arrow appears. And as I pull, it starts to loop the track from the beginning. So if you have a track that you do want to loop, that's a very useful and very intuitive feature. Now, some of the newer things we have here, uh, we moved some of the functionality that we previously had in this lower bar over to the sidebar here. So can open this up and we've got our loops menu. We also have our more detailed track information menu and we have our media browser. All of which you're going to use a lot if you do GarageBand projects. So for the media browser you can see up here you can go through various audio tracks, you can access your iTunes playlists, you can actually drag folders from the finder in, so if we go and we find a folder here, let's say we wanted to drag this music for the podcast folder over, you can just drag the folder and you can see the 
green plus sign will appear and you can drop that folder in and then you can have access directly through the media browser which is very cool. We also have access to photos and if you want to do a podcast where you have some visuals this is great you just load up some photos and then you can actually drag them in here and then when you save out your track if you save it as an enhanced AAC file people who are watching on an iPod or on a computer or iPhone they'll be able to see those photos which is great it's kind of like a slideshow episode there are a lot of podcasts I listen to that do that and that's great if you also want to move in some movie tracks and do some more advanced movie uh, soundtrack edition you can do that here too so it's very cool with the media browser now with the loop editor it's it's very simple in GarageBand to add some music so you can see we can go through here and if we look for some jingles oh let's find some country jingles why not campfire what's that sound like I was running that when I used to teach it oh, I'll try that again The University of Wisconsin campfire and drag that into our project. We could just take it, drag it, put it onto one of these tracks, or drag it down here and start a new track. Let's start a new track. So you can see it's copying it over. Now we have our campfire track. And as we're playing, I've had her since kind of up as a clinician. Mess right now with all these other tracks. If we just wanted to listen to this, we could click on the solo track. Now we'll just hear this. You can see when we dragged it in it automatically added the blue arrow because it knows that it's a jingle so it makes it a track that will duck out of the other tracks so in case you want it to be a secondary track. We'll just remove that track which is easy to do in GarageBand. It's just command delete. Now let's take a look at one more feature. Let's click on my voice track right here. And let's go over to info. If we click on info, we have all kinds of effects right here. So this is where you can just browse for different effects. You can see I have it set to the podcasting effect because I was working with my voice. You can add all sorts of things. Eyesight, if you're working off your eyesight camera, different narrator effects. If we have vocals, we can do all sorts of things with the vocals right here. I have the same thing with the instrumental tracks, but we can also now, and this is new, and this is very cool. This really kicks up the feature set a notch, in my opinion. If we click over to edit here, now we have this really slick interface, and any effects we've added to this track, we can now work with. It was kind of a clunky interface uh, in GarageBand 08. It would work, but it was not nearly as slick. So we have all these different effects that we can we can work with and we can just click this box and you can see the blue light will come on or off and that indicates whether that effects on or off so it's very easy to turn on and off effects we also have our reverb and our echo and then we can save this out as a specific instrument so if we want to use this set of effects on another track in the future we'll have that saved out we can also go over to master track we can do some some editing and more global editing right here. So anyway, these are just a few of the features of GarageBand 09. I'm really a fan. And if you haven't used this piece of software, I, I think you'll find that, uh, especially if you've used some more complicated, some PC editors or even something like Audacity, I think you'll find that after you get used to the interface, you're really going to love it. Just it, It's very easy to deal with. It's got the drag and drop functionality. makes it very easy to share or to add your audio to other things like movies or slideshows. It's really sped up my workflow, which I didn't really anticipate when I started using it. I, I was just starting to screw around with it. I thought I would continue to use Audacity, but I, I quickly grew to love this piece of software. And if you do any audio work, I really highly recommend checking out the new GarageBand 09.